college football imperialism is headed to Asia, and we have a unique host of challenges today to spice up the competition. Here are the challenges exclusive to the continent of Asia. Teams will have to play in the stadium that holds the most capacity since Asia has the world's most population. The Ninja Rule. Losing team in the fourth quarter gets to sabotage the opponent by taking out one of their players. Only catch is it can't be the QB, but anyone else is fair game. Prove it. Winning team has to play in longer games for each subsequent victory. A victor has already been crowned in Antarctica and Europe. So who's going to come out on top in Asia? Remember, the team that comes out on top in this continent gets to steal a player from other Big 12 schools for as many wins as they rack up. And that's not all. The winning team gets to bring two campus legends to join them in the fray as they compete for global domination. That's where I'll need your help. In the comment section, let me know what campus legends you want to see in the grand finale as they represent the continent, the Big 12, and their team. And of course, you're not going to want to miss what comes next, so subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Spinning the wheel of Big 12 teams, don't forget it's a new look conference with all the additions, but it's going to start with West Virginia. As commonplace in any imperialism, you spin the arrow to determine what direction West Virginia is headed. All right, all right, we got West Virginia playing Kansas to kick off the battle for Asia. Rose Bowl in 1973 had 106,000 fans come to the stadium, which was a postseason record, and since the stakes are high, it's global imperialism. We're playing here. Kansas, West Virginia on the big stage for Asia. I must admit the Jayhawks have been getting better year over year and it kind of pains me to say that. It's all fun and games and it only pains me because I'm a K-State alum. Truthfully though, I think it's good when competition is tough. It makes for a lot more exciting games. And speaking of tough competition right now, West Virginia is getting beaten by 13 points. They're punting it back in the fourth quarter so KU is in the driver's seat. West Virginia losing right now, choosing to hold on to the ninja ability. They're down by 13 but if they can get a stop, they want to use the ability when they're on offense. West Virginia's coach told me the plan is to sabotage Kobe Bryant, the top cornerback from KU, but I'm thinking they just need to get a stop here and have a chance to get the ball back. Third and goal, KU got West Virginia to burn all their timeouts and it doesn't even matter. Touchdown, Jayhawks. West Virginia sabotages the secondary of the Jayhawks, giving them a less experienced group. And let's see if Green can go deep and capitalize on it. It didn't matter. The first play after sabotage, they throw a pick. Dotson came down with it. It's safe to say that today was not West Virginia's day by any means. Jayhawks are going to cruise to victory. All over here, Jayhawks on top 23 to 3. So they're going to have to go and prove it next time they play. They're going to have to have a longer game. KU draws first blood in this one. West Virginia didn't have much of a chance. Unfortunately, someone has to fall first. That's just how imperialism goes. Next up, it's Cincinnati. Spinning the arrow, we got to go to the right and down a bit. Cincinnati, located in India, has to cross the sea and face TCU out of the Myanmar, Thailand area. 14 14, all tied up. Frogs and Bearcats going at it here. In Bearcats deliver a big blow. That pushes TCU backwards, leading to a giant field goal attempt, and he's good. Costly penalties halted this drive, so it's third and 22. He's just going to have to let one rip, and it's nowhere. No man's land. TCU holds. To help with this drive, Cincinnati's head coach is called upon the ninja ability, taking out Josh Newton. Just like that, TCU's best corner is on the bench, and Cincinnati's hopeful that this will give them the momentum they need. Third and 13. Is he going to convert right here? He's going for a big one and he's got a man. Oh my goodness. 30 yards to D Wiggins. It seemed like there was some sort of miscommunication out there in the secondary as Jones steps up, only gets nothing. Another big time third down here. They need a first down, try to get in a field goal range or something and that's going to do. Red zone action. Strap in folks. The imperialism madness is already upon us. 30 seconds to go. Will Cincinnati step up and be victorious? Good run. Honestly, brilliant job from TCU's defense to still get the hold. Tie game. Fourth down. That was Briggs' third sack of the day. This is in ever so crucial. He catches it and converts. If the Frogs want to keep things interesting, they need to score right here, right now, and he's got a wide open receiver. 24-24. Double OT action here. TCU going across the middle's got a guy. That fourth down from the first round of OT coming back to haunt these guys a little bit because now look. Frogs have the lead. Cincinnati has a chance to respond here and on second and 14 calling the QB keeper. Gotta do better than that. In third and 11, it's two down territory. You're going for two plays and that's a big one. Ooh, pass interference on the offense. But hey, scrapping back 16 on that last play, fourth and six, this is manageable and he's got the conversion. First down, first and goal. We're only in game two for the conquest for Asia and this has been madness. It's all tied up. 
going to triple overtime. 31-31 triple OT. Who wants it more, Cincinnati or TCU? I am eager to see what happens. Now Cincinnati settles for the field goal. Bearcats defense determined to get a stop here. They want fourth down and they're not going to get it first in 10. It has been a back and forth tug of war. Triple overtime dot to the corner. Third and two. Good catch. That receiver Jalen Robinson has been stepping up here and on third and two just looking for anyone. He's got it. Touchdown. Dylan Wright for the win. It's officially in the books. Horn Frogs survive in triple overtime. What a thriller of a game in just game two. A brutal way for Cincinnati to go out in TCU is now taking over India. The next team with a shot at imperialism glory is Texas Tech. Let's see where we're sending these guys off to. And boom, just like that little in-state Texas battle, Tech versus Baylor, but the stakes are much higher. It's for Asia. Traditionally, a Texas shootout game, Texas Tech, Baylor, it's 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Tech on a third and 11 here, winding down the clock, looking to get a conversion, and he's decked by the Baylor Bear. Baylor down by 10, wasting no time to deploy the ninja ability. Dadrian Taylor, their star star safety is now on the bench for Tech. Baylor's optimistic that taking a star safety out of the equation will open up the secondary. Two interceptions. It has not been a friendly performance. Well, here's a third down, a quick pass. What in the world? I don't think I've ever seen the AI do something like that. That's like when you spam click the receiver that you're trying to pass to as you're snapping the ball. Fresh set of downs and it's first in goal. Can they score? They can. If Texas Tech can get a first down here though, I think the game is over. QB keeper, it's fourth and he has a big leg. Heck, I don't know. You could have probably iced out this game if you got the first down, but now Baylor has a wide open shot at the crown going for the win. Shapin literally wasting no time. He's actually coming alive in the fourth quarter and finishes it off. No, out of bounds. This has been an offensive surge in the fourth quarter that was non-existent earlier going to the end zone. First and goal. So now it's a mad dash back to the line. Fourth and goal. You can't spike it. Time is ticking. They're just going to snap it quick. Can they get the touchdown? Looking for someone, anyone. He's got the tight end. No. Oh my goodness. In and out of the hands. Texas Tech holds on. The Red Ray survived the Baylor's scary comeback here and look at the play of the game the deflection at the end that sealed it for the Raiders my goodness it was this close from him holding on to that ball and winning it for Baylor that my friends was insane Baylor is out of here Texas Tech has the whole left side of Asia. Running it back on the wheel. It looks like U of A is up. Arizona Wildcats, new kid in town, has to go to the right and down. That's going to square him up against BYU. 10 to 9 ball game here. Arizona, BYU. I'll keep it a buck. I didn't expect BYU to be keeping it this close. BYU defense has done a pretty good job holding Arizona, and they even had a safety earlier in this one, as Arizona's defense now says, hey, it's my turn to get the stop. Second and eight, Noah and the Wildcats taking the BYU Cougars to through this this wind and grind clock game and they're going to do it again. Just kidding because this time BYU's coach called the timeout trying to save as much time as they can get back. And for this drive, BYU's deploying the ninja ability to take out Jacob Manu. This is BYU's moment to shine down by a touchdown. They got to get back. With one minute to go in the fourth here, it's a handoff. They get the first down and some. That's a big run up the middle. Here we go. Launching one on third and inches. Just way overthrew him. Not going to lie, that felt a little unnecessary to just absolutely let one rip like that. But anyways, the QB keeper worked out. 20 seconds left. Second and 10 back to the running back once more they don't got much time to waste around here eight seconds seven seconds third and three six five four sacked oh my goodness one timeout left came in clutch here because it's fourth and nine time has expired and that was not the right call with time expiring bruh BYU should have took their shot to the end zone instead Arizona holds on for the victory Tyler Loop a kicker get player of the game trust me you see things in imperialism that you've never seen before just like a kicker getting player of the game dwindling down some teams out there on the Asia map and it's gonna head to UCF next it's gonna be to the left and down which the team that borders the most in line with that is the Kansas State Wildcats. All right, UCF, K-State, UCF up by four. My cats are in danger, so we have to battle here, and we'll take a third down. Trust me, I'm an unbiased spectator here for imperialism purposes, but I'm always rooting for the cats. Seeing the stop there holds them to a field goal, which they make, so we're down by a touchdown. Fourth and inches, and really coach is telling them to punt. Most teams use the ninja ability on defense, but K-State's choosing to take out their top receiver. UCF's probably going to be running the ball 
ball more often than not just to kill clock. But see, when they drop back and pass, they're hoping that having one less star receiver out there will help. Now, K-State's all out of timeouts. This is for all the marbles. Third and nine. He's taking his shot. He's got a man. There's a flag. Hold on. Refs call pass interference on, I think that was the, the offense. So here we go, K-State faithful. This is your last chance to get down the field. Ben Sinnott, the recent draft pick. Tight end for K-State headed to the Washington Commanders. Will Howard going deep. He's got a man, and he dropped it on the sideline. 40 seconds left, no timeouts. It's do or die. Going for a massive play. He's got his man. Oh, my goodness. Is that Phillip Brooks to the house? It is. Come on, man. That was literally insane, but UCF still has six. 16 seconds, two timeouts. They just need field goal range. Can UCF dial in some late game heroics here? Going across the middle. He's got a man. Oh my gosh. Heroics with an emphasis. They strike right back. They said 66 yard touchdown for Brooks, 43. And that was the dagger. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. Imperialism is popping off right now. Big 12. The battle for Asia is sicko. Although it hurts me as a case stater, I gotta say respect to UCF. Down go the Wildcats, unfortunately, but now Iowa State will have their chance. Spinning that arrow, we got Iowa State headed to the left. A little battle for the islands down here. So Iowa State quarterback curiously chewing clock here. It's fourth and nine. They're not even, oh, they get the snap off. I thought they weren't even going to get it off. So uh, big play. They do convert. Wow, he gets the hand across the line. Quarterback Rocco only able to muster up 69 yards today. Nice, but... uh. Not nice enough for the win. Interested to see if they can score some points here, but even if they do, I'm a little pessimistic about the outlook. Every extra play is just more seconds off the clock, so honestly, this is helping you tie out. Now, hold on now. We can't change the dial on this game because Rocco is somehow fourth quarter driving down this field. First and goal needing two scores here, so he's going to try to get one right here, and wow, that was scary. Third and goal sending the tight end outward. It's a read option. It looks like he's going to keep it himself and score. Brutal sequence of events. They missed the extra point. The Onside kick recovered by Utah and just to top it off, running back going to the house. But now the Utah Utes can celebrate as they are one step closer to conquering Asia. Utah snags full control of the islands. Here we go once more. This time it looks like prime time. See you on the clock. Determining where the buffs will go. That will be CU versus KU. Adding two minutes on this one because KU's won one game already so they're going to have to go through a longer battle against the buffs. CU defense has stepped it up in this one winning 13 to 3 over the Jayhawks. There's six minutes left. This is a third down. Will the Jayhawks convert running over one guy but stopped fourth down. That drive did not work out for KU, came away with no points, but Shadur Sanders and the Buffs are trying to tack it on. KU running out of time to come back, and this would be a real backbreaker if CU scores, and Shadur is going to score himself. Even with Travis Hunter neutralized, KU is not mustering up anything. KU's use of the ninja ability is probably the most impactful, taking out a star like Travis Hunter, but it's not mattering in this one. They're just not going anywhere. Colorado comes in and gets the dub decisively over KU, 27-3, to led by Shitter Sanders. Shitter Sanders and Travis Hunter can be a hard duo to go up against in imperialism. Both Kansas schools wiped off the map, and we're going right back to CU. Didn't waste much time here this time. They're going to be going shoulder to shoulder with Arizona State. Fourth quarter action, Sun Devils on the move, third and six, down by three touchdowns, so they needed that conversion. I understand things can change on the flip of a switch, just like this, touchdown. Sun Devils. We have to keep this momentum. And here we go. Sun Devil defense got him to third and 13. Smacks Shader Sanders and tackles the running back for loss. You already know another team using the ninja ability to sabotage Travis Hunter. The opponent's going to sabotage your guy. That's just the nature of the beast. Just outside the red zone, a valiant effort here right now by the Sun Devils. And look at this. It's first and goal. No, it's a touchdown. He ran him over. Travis Hunter back on the field on offense, right? Because we sabotaged his game on defense. So he's able to play now and see you breaking free with a big pass. Arizona State in desperate need of this drive to stall out. Sanders, it's going to stall out because no way he gets 20 yards here. Man, oh man, strap in. We are down by a touchdown in this one. Arizona State is moving. Arizona State, a basement team in the Pac-12 looking to do the impossible here against CU. 
if the Buffs blow a 21 point lead in the last five minutes of fourth quarter, I don't know what to say. I will lose my mind if they can complete the comeback because they're looking really good right now, making the right plays. Third and one, just need a couple yards here. They'll get more than that. Number nine holds on. Big catch. Sun Devils in the red zone. Hold on now. QB keeper. What is going on right now? Looking to complete this thing. It's first and goal. Trenton Borget, I think is how you pronounce it, is having the game of his life and he finds his receiver out of bounds. What? Really not sure what the coach said on the sidelines that's fired up the guys like this. This is unbelievable. Some inspired football happening right now, but we'll need one last push if Arizona State's going to get a touchdown. And CU says, wait a second, we're still here. We're still playing. Getting a little wild with it there, delivering the hit, and it's 10 seconds left. Fourth and goal. This is it. And brother, that was not the right pass. And CU holds. Congratulations, Buffs. You just survived a wacky and wild comeback from the Sun Devils. So... Uh, onward the buffs go shooter sanders did just enough another crazy game in the books this time cu survives and they have the largest part of asia definitely a lot of good teams left and a couple that are yet to play that being houston one of them let's go see who they have to go up against houston ucf ucf knocked off the k-state wildcats on a last second miracle and they're looking to prove it here that they can hang with the houston cougars and that what a what a shrug what a just shrug him off stiff arm to the face touchdown looks like ucf showed they got a tough guy back here at quarterback and nowhere near anyone momentum has quickly shifted in ucf's favor they come down and get a quick one here so houston looking to strike fast first in goal usually houston's a good team that can keep up in a high scoring affair and they're tying it back up trying to keep the drive alive he's gonna go over the middle that was dangerous somehow he came away with it are you serious i thought that was picked third and 17 looking for the first and that was like worst case scenario huge defensive stand by ucf and now with under 20 seconds to go it's really up to them to see if they want to come down this field and win in a huge run by the quarterback massive 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 30 yard carry and on just one play they're pretty much in field goal range already looking for some extra yards to do the trick any college kicker should be able to hit that routinely and they do that's the winner UCF with a knack for the game winner that's two wins for these guys and they're right up there with CU with two wins can they keep it up Houston one and done in imperialism today and UCF just continues to get stronger handful of teams remain and it's gonna go to Utah let's figure out where Utah has to go next based on the arrow for looking straight up Utah is gonna have to go play Arizona both Arizona and Utah have won one game so far in the imperialism conquest so someone's got to win their second game and someone unfortunately is gonna get knocked out with five seconds left here on the game clock let's see what Arizona can do up by six handoff that's a good run running their way all the way down to the red zone it's gonna be difficult if arizona can't get the stop here oh my goodness what a run by the quarterback big third down can he convert going across the middle he got just enough utah dropping back going back again to the receiver mikey matthews first and goal two teams that used to be in the pack 12 now in the big 12 and number 16 keeps it with the read option he's got a six of his own utah chooses to sabotage mcmillan their star receiver it's a very unfortunate circumstance right now for Utah as it's fourth and 20. You have to get a big play and that was not enough. Arizona got the ball in really good position and they go three and out, but a field goal would in fact be the dagger if he can nail it and he does. So Arizona should win. Millen had 124 yards in two touchdowns before Utah was able to sabotage and take him out the game. So uh, unfortunately, a little too late all in all, Utah could not mount up the effort needed to win this game. Arizona is gonna be a tough out for anyone that has to go up against these guys six teams remain spinning that wheel it looks like texas tech is going to have another shot and the red raiders have to go to the right and down only logical opponent that makes sense is ucf nine minute quarters really making ucf work for it the cover is starting to be taken off of ucf 23 7 red raiders exposing this group and even with a 16 point lead they're already flying back to the line high tempo just trying to get more methodically marching all the way down into the red zone they're looking for some more points second and three dropping back to pass he gets a man across the middle first and goal hurrying up the troops to the line they want these points and they're keeping ucf on the field and making them exhausted that defense has had a long day and taj brooks just delivers the dagger third touchdown on the ground fourth and goal another handoff this time he scores ucf tried getting a little crafty with it here fourth and three yep couldn't complete the comeback not really close 
Tech gets the big W here. They're excited because their journey is one step closer to Asia. They want the continent bad. But Tech still has to go through four giants first to see if they can be the one on top. Spinning the wheel of remaining teams, Oklahoma State finally comes out of the dark, gets their first game. Who's it gonna be? Oklahoma State, CU. Has primetime met their match with Oklahoma State here? Up by seven, going for a big ball. He's got him, 80 down first and goal. Cowboys got Ollie Gordon, one of the best running backs in the nation. Just gonna be a read option there. QB says, I'll score, thank you very much. See you wasting no time taking out the Cowboys best corner. They are hopeful that that ninja ability will come to help them because look who's out there. That's not Shadur Sanders. I think Sanders got hurt. Can the backup quarterback for CU score and get this thing interesting again? He fights, but it's short by inches. Primetime tells Ryan Staub to get back out there, snap this ball, make him proud, and Oklahoma State says no. You hate to see injuries, but literally for CU, their whole season, imperialism, everything comes down to Ryan Staub, the backup. Pass interference on the offense, it's going to be fourth and 19. And well, I'll be darned. CU says that's too far. We're throwing up the white flag. GG, Oklahoma State, you bested us. Third down, CU burning all their timeouts now, and yep, that first down, geez. First and goal handoff, it is a touchdown, Oklahoma State up by three touchdowns. Condolences to CU fans, that is not the outcome you like to see. You had a nice imperialism run, but Shadur Sanders went down early, so you're forced to depend on the backup. It didn't pay out. Yeah, I feel like I didn't credit Oklahoma State enough. I mean, Shadur Sanders doesn't play defense, and Oklahoma State was able to score 31 points, so it was a really solid performance from these guys. Four teams remain. Let's spin the wheel. It looks like Texas Tech. Their conquest will continue to the right, and hey, it's Oklahoma State right back at it. Oklahoma State Cowboys down by a touchdown, third down conversion. It's a first. Cowboys were able to neutralize the buffs with a little help there. And then Texas Tech is a tough opponent too. Two straight difficult matchups. But honestly, at this point in Imperialism, every game is going to be tough as 88 stays in bounds and gets the first. That puts Alan Bowman over 400 passing yards. And he's got another connection to number eight and they're this close to scoring. First and goal for the Cowboys. They got a lot of options here, and they're just going to go right up the gut. Touchdown. Oklahoma State flips the field pretty quick and gets another shot here, but he gets destroyed by a big sack. That's going to make this kick about a 51-yarder. Does he have the leg? Yes, enough juice. Four minutes, 44 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Fours everywhere. Will Tech get a drive going? And on fourth down, their quarterback with four passing touchdowns decides to punt it back. Their faith in the defense paid off because they have the ball in the red zone, running back, running over guys. First and goal with the tempo here, dropping back to pass. He's going to go for it, and he's got the touchdown. Number one, Price gets the team back on top. Oklahoma State has like double the yards Texas Tech has. Actually over 600 today, yet they're losing by four. Ollie Gordon with the nice run, fresh set of downs, looking to go deep, going for a big one. He had a man and just overdid it. There has been a whole lot of offense, not as much defense to show for it today. Huge fourth down. They need this badly. And that was a rushed decision and turnover, brother. Game on the line. Texas Tech, can they convert? It looks like they have the space to do it. And that stop is going to be too long late. Over 600 total yards was not enough for Oklahoma State. They fall to the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Tyler efficient, five touchdown passes for the guy. Final three coming into picture. It's Texas Tech, Arizona, and TCU. We have not heard from TCU in a while, so the wheel says let's hear from them now. Are they ready to go or are they a little bit cold waiting in the wings? Because they're going to have to go up against a red hot Texas Tech team. So I think TCU answered my question with an emphatic yes, they are ready despite that touchdown right there. They're killing these guys. Even longer quarters in this one because there's been a lot of need for Texas Tech to prove it. The more wins, the longer the games, and Tech looked unstoppable for a while, I guess until they met TCU. That pick they just had didn't do anything on offense. If TCU keeps playing like this, they'll be a real threat to win it all. These guys have literally had backups in like all quarter. So let's watch and see if the backups can get it done and get six of their own. And he had him. This backup is wildly inaccurate though. Field goal's a field goal, I guess. Texas Tech has only been three for 15 on third down conversions today. And that's a big reason why they're failing. When it's all said and done, the, when the bloodbath is all said and done, TCU comes out on top with 66 points. Chandler Morris, 425 yards, six touchdown passes. 
insane in the membrane. All rested up after their slumber, TCU comes out in emphatic fashion for the win with style. So TCU is going to go up against Arizona in the grand finale here for Asia. Winner of this game represents Asia for world domination. We have made it to the championship game for Asia and TCU is down by eight and they get the first down here. So that's going to help them continue this drive. But you already know we turned up the game quarters to 15 minutes because it's the biggest stage. Someone's going to have to show that they are the real deal. Is it going to be TCU? Is it going to be Arizona? Both look pretty tough right now. TCU couldn't get the job done, so Noah and the Wildcats are going to drive. Which team is going to join the other two teams that are already victors of their respective continents? Either team, whether it's Arizona or Texas Christian, I think they'll be really strong plays in the global conquest for domination. Let's be real. TCU or Arizona is both going to steal Travis Hunter to the team if I had to bet. Big touchdown there from Arizona. So TCU's forced to drive and drive fast. So within just a couple minutes, the Frogs are also in their own goal line and score a touchdown as well. We got a shootout. Six minutes on the clock, third and seven for the Frogs. Can they convert? Arizona defense makes the big play. Third and three, looking to convert here. Arizona looking to pass. He's going to keep it. He's not going to go anywhere. So TCU might get the ball back. TCU targets sophomore Jacob Manu, 90 overall linebacker, and takes him out the game. In the championship game, you need all your stars on the field. And TCU needs to get a star player involved with a pass to no man's land. TCU looking at the danger zone here with only two minutes left. They needed this defensive stop. Now third and three. The running back's going to take the carry and get stuffed. Clock ticking. The Frogs hopes and dreams on the line. They just go with a halfback draw that was a questionable call coach to be frank with you i think tcu's coach sold it with that play call that was a little ridiculous and arizona is able to finish out the rest of this game in victory formation and there it is you're looking at the asia champion and it's the Arizona Wildcats. These guys are going to be strong going into the world tournament. And TCU unfortunately got close, but couldn't finish the dang thing. But on the contrary, oh, how sweet it is for the Arizona Wildcats. And for those that haven't seen Europe or Antarctica yet, you might want to go watch those now because I'm about to show the global map that will reveal the victors from those continents. So go ahead and check out those other vids. But for everyone else, here is a look at the global imperialism map at the end of Asia. We have Arizona representing in their continent, Hawaii representing from Europe, and Ole Miss from Antarctica. This has become a really fun series, and if you're soaking it up like I am, drop a like and hit that subscribe button. And in the meantime, go check out any of these. I'm sure you'll be just as entertained.